Eric Rutten uh, criticizing Israel Kisner about the, the function of prices in economic calculation. Mm. Uh, do you still think that uh, isolate, isolated prices don't contain any relevant information? Well, I think uh, prices, of course, do contain relevant information because uh, uh, things that happened in the immediate past are relevant for present uh, decision making. Only it's, it's not sufficient. Uh, the, the weakness in uh, uh, Israel Kirchner's uh, theory of uh, market prices guiding entrepreneurs is that the, the theory implicitly assumes that the prices are sufficient information. Okay. Mm -hmm. And well, let's pass to. Uh money, liquidity. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about uh, Karl Menger's uh, definition of liquidity? Because I have the, the impression, the opinion that Austrian school has uh, developed a lot the, the concept of marginal utility or of utility, mm -hmm. but has uh, forgotten uh, almost totally about the concept of liquidity. Mm -hmm. Because we can say that goods have two properties, both mm -hmm. utility and liquidity, but we have just focused on utility. What's your opinion in this, on this topic? Well, I mean, uh, the liquidity is certainly one of the elements that create the uh, utility of a good. So I don't think well, one can neatly separate these two aspects. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the Austrian uh, theory of uh, the, the demand for money has suffered in my eyes from the fact that it, it has neglected the physical qualities of the, the goods. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, it has neglected to inquire what are the further, the more remote causes of, of utility. But I mean, in, in our current generation, there are a few people who are working on this <laughs> problem. Okay. Uh, another question or another topic is uh, Louis von Mises uh, sustains claims that uh, um, ba uh, bank paper, bank money, it's a present good, not a, fu uh, not a future good. Mm -hmm. that it's like, God uh, like gold because it's a gold substitute. Uh, my opinion, uh, uh, money is, uh, or paper money, it's a future good mm -hmm. um, because uh, if, you, if a bank uh, issues uh, paper money for uh, 100 um, ounces of, of gold and mm. uh, tomorrow a, a, a bunch of thieves steal the gold from the bank, mm -hmm. the, the, the paper money loses of it, mm. all its money. It's like a bond mm. in default. Mm. But you have claimed, if I'm not wrong, that uh, the um, fiduciary or fiat money still circulates because uh, it acquires the property when mm. it is defaulted mm. of, mm. of money. What's your criteria about this? Because I mean, it, it for me it transmits or it gives the, the impression that mm. uh, we have the previous money that it's gold and the new money mm. that it's paper. So we have the, uh, duplicated the, the wealth of a society just by defaulting on an obligation. Mm. Well, uh, I think of course the, the point is correct that. Uh, uh, the objective utility or the, the objective characteristic of a, a paper ticket to provide you services is linked to its uh, to the possibility of redeeming it and this might not be given if you have bank robbery and other things but again from uh, the point of view of um, uh, market pricing the relevant criteria is not how uh, what, what are the objective physical qualities of a good but how it is perceived by the users so to the extent that the users think that there's no problem in redeeming this, then of course it is a present good. But if it is irre irredeemable? Uh, if it is irredeemable, then, then it is paper money. It's not but, just a but, substitute. But do, do you think that its value depends only on the acceptance of the people or that the bank, the bank's assets, uh, even if it is not redeemable, are important? I mean, is it the same, the money? Irredeemable money, it's the same. It is. It comes from a bank with no assets or mm -hmm. not with a bank very rich. Well, the, the assets are important as, as far as the uh, exchange rate of this uh, this money is concerned. As far as the internal use of, of the money is concerned, the, the assets are not really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the presentation, in your presentation, you, you defended Adam Smith. Uh, what's your opinion on a very uh, specific topic of Adam Smith that is uh, real bills doctrine because mm. it has been a, a, a very important topic that even has uh, wa or was developed by uh, 
some sort of uh, German monetary school in the beginning mm. of the 20th century. What's mm. your vision? Yeah, I think that this is a, a flawed doctrine. Yeah? <laughs> why, <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. Well, because it in implicitly assumes that the, the value uh, of the goods that are, so to say, uh, the um, uh, underlying asset for, for the real bill uh, that, that, that the bank issues can be determined independently of the quantity of money that is being produced. And that's not, that's not true. But, I mean, if you issue money against goods that are mm. uh, being uh, purchased with almost security, of course it's an mm. entrepreneurial judgment, mm. but against goods that will be purchased with almost security, mm -hmm. why do you think that generates inflation? Money inflation, it is obvious, but mm. price imp inflation not. Well, because there's always a link between the money supply and uh, the price but, level. But the, the money comes in yeah. with the goods and comes out with the goods because once you purchase yeah. the goods, the mm. money is destroyed. Yeah, but if, if the money had, this additional money had not been created, then the goods would have to be sold at a lower price. But you can also purchase goods not against uh, cash money, but mm. ag against promises of future money. Yeah, that, but that's a, this is a different issue. Then you... Uh, 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 sell against the credit. You sell for credit. Mm, uh, that's different. Not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> that's different. Um, and do, do you are aware of the workings of Melchor Parsi? I'm sure you are. But of uh, Antal Fekete? Uh, yes. And what's your opinion, your vision? Well, he has some very good points uh, in, in his writings. I uh, especially appreciate that he was one of uh, the first uh, economists who has drawn uh, attention to the fact that central banks manipulate uh, spot prices through uh, the derivative markets. I think that's a very important uh, point. I disagree with him on other other questions, such mm -hmm. as fundamental questions, uh, such as uh, the utility of money and so on. But mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, uh, in regards to methodology, you have a very important work on this on this topic. Uh, what do you think is your uh, or the importance, the, the relevance of your approach, for example, against the, the um, logical positivism, the falsationism of Karl Popper? Hmm. Well, uh, according to the positivists, you can verify and or refute uh, assertions about the real world by confrontation of the theory to the real world. The problem that we confront in economics is that our statements are uh, counterfactual. Of the laws that we use are counterfactual laws, which is, by the way, something that Adam Smith realized perfectly well and that uh, uh, David Ricardo also realized perfectly well. And as a consequence, uh, we cannot directly apply uh, this uh, empirical, the empirical techniques that we use in the natural sciences. Uh, the best we can uh, do is to try to approximate, but we always have the problem of identifying the control group. And because we are saying, well, for example, as a consequence of the increase of the money supply, prices are higher than they otherwise would have been. And we cannot observe how they otherwise would have been, right? So we, in, uh, in empirical work, the difficulty is then to identify some co control group, a different country where conditions are by and large the same and we, where we didn't increase the money supply. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.